Ah, oh, it's a great day. Great day to be rowing. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Lovely day. Let's go to arms only. I watched um, the Queen's Gambit yesterday. Finished watching the Queen's Gambit on Netflix. It was wonderful. Great, great experience. And um, at the end of this workout, I'll take a couple pictures of a pond that I dug in this backyard. And I wasn't sore from it. And it was a massive pond. And I can't believe I'm actually walking nice and straight. All right. <laughs> Let's keep the body nice and tall. Draw the handle to the sternum right below the chest line. Making sure that when you draw in, the wrists stay flat. You sit tall, you keep your neck beautifully above your shoulders and you draw the handle in to the sternum right below the chest line. The shirt I'm wearing is the Mandalorian with quote unquote Baby Yoda. Uh, another good show to watch if you are a Star Wars fan. And extend those arms, I will add in the swing of the upper body in one on this one here we go so we hinge forward keep your toes flexed back so that you use the strap to create more pressure off the heels against the footboard and when you do that the legs are nice and straight the knees are straight completely immobile, pushing the heels totally down and extending those arms before the follow through in the upper body to get the forward body angle. That's it. Extending the arms, following through, hinging at the hip joint. And as we move, we will add in quarter slide rowing, but remember, only add the rise of the knees once from your vantage point, the toes are being covered by the handle. So when you look down, when you look down at the handle, you can see that the toes at one point are covered and only then you bring the knees up. So we'll add in quarter slide in one, on this one, let's throw a quarter slide. That's it. A tiny rise of the knees. You can really see how my handle travels over and beyond the knees before the knees come and rise up. In rowing, this is very beneficial because by transferring the body weight of the upper body onto your footboard, you create more balancing points on either side of the keel with the weight of your body being transferred over to the footboard and you have two feet so you have port and starboard and you can balance the boat better like that that's right elbows hinging the upper body forward cover the toes and then let the knees rise up and all this while keeping the shoulders nice and low and we go to half slide on this one let the knees rise to the elbows and push through that's it elbows and knees they match up and then we push through that's just beautiful allowing the sequential recovery to happen elbows back cover the toes let the knees rise up beautiful and we go to three quarters slide in one on this one three quarters let the knees rise but don't let the heels come off the footboard that's right extending the arms hinging forward 
covering the toes and then compress the legs as far as the heels go without coming off the footboard. You may feel that a little bit of a compression in the shin bones or the shin muscles, a little bit of a stretch maybe in the Achilles tendons. Taking the time to breathe and exhale. That's right, we're still at three quarter slide length. Very good. And this workout, of course, will upload by Tuesday. So you get to see my side view as well. And we move on to full slide into in one and now we roll on to the ball of the foot and just drive through we are now at that full length of the rowing stroke and you hear my breathing allowing the air to travel out when I go into full compression and while I drive the stroke you still hear me talking which means I never hold my breath when I row. That's it. There we go. Extending those arms with the lovely stroke grade of 21 here. Let's hold the handle in one hand, put the left hand behind your back, and we draw with one arm only. This is a very standard drill when you row in eights in rowing. Rowing one arm only, making sure you have the rotation of the upper body going through at the catch as well as at the finish. We'll do five more on one arm. That's two, three, four, five. And let's add in the middle, the left hand. Extend, stay sequential. Really feel how you elongate your bones on the recovery actually elongate your range of motion by lay, lining up your bones. You can't elongate your bones. They're one, this, they're one length. But you want to elongate, really feel that you're reaching as far as you can away from your hip joint before the rise of the knees. Oh, yes. Feels good. We do a nice, good technical warm-up to clean our minds. Let's hold the handle in the opposite hand. In my case, it is now the left, the left arm. You can see I take the time to rotate. And for some of you who cannot grow one arm at a time, just modify it and keep rowing with both hands on, extending back, feel how the elbow travels back, sit up tall, chest out, that's right, very good, nice job, we'll do five more here, one, two, with both hands on and nice and tall. Extend those arms. That's right. Beautiful. Letting the handle travel away from your deceit. 
let the handle travel away from the hip joint before the rise of the knees. That's beautiful. Very nice. Let's stick one leg in and one leg out. My left leg is inside the arms, whereas my right knee is slightly on the outside of my right arm. So when you row like this, you kind of row on starboard side of, of sweep rowing. They stick their leg out to be able to rotate and have a long stroke. Both knees back in. Feel how symmetric the stroke is with both knees rising at the same time and the same angle. Let's drop the left knee out. And when you roll like this, you're more like somebody who rows who starboard in a boat. And why are we doing this? When you do longer distance rows, it's actually really important to keep the blood flow going throughout your back. Obviously, we're sitting, but by changing the angle of your legs, it changes how the muscles work for you. And that creates a little bit of a relief to the back. If every once in a while you feel that you're getting a little tight, let's bring the left leg back in. Good job. So the knees rise up inside of the arms. And it would be not complete if we did not bring the knees outside together. And you can bring the hands to the middle and let the knees stick out on either side of the straight arms. And when you do this, I hope you feel that in some ways you can actually have a little bit more forward body angle at the catch because your upper body does not bump against your quads. So you can actually reach a little bit more and feel how your spine gets stretched out when you simply suspend it off your fingertips as you drive the legs and maintain that distance of the handle as you drive the legs. You don't pull early stay elongated and you let the legs drive and back to a regular grip knees inside and sitting tall very good in one minute we'll take a water break and before we do I want you to do a pause drill at body over every third stroke. And here we go, this is one, two, and three, and this is just a pause. And with the pause, you cover the toes with the handle and you roll for three. One, and you pause again, legs are straight, and row, one, two, three, and we pause, we'll do it one more time, and row, one, two, three, there's the pause, Let's paddle. And doing that pause drill really emphasizes 
that you have that movement of the upper body before the knees rise up. Why is that important? It's important so that you can drive the legs against a forward body angle that's not in a weird position. All right, so grab a drink because I don't want you guys getting dehydrated and someone finding you on the ground and they have to peel you off the ground. So grab your drink before we get started with some hard strokes here. It'll be beautiful. And again, modify it if you need to. Doesn't mean if I go a certain stroke rate, you don't exactly have to match me. If I could say, let's go hard, you go at your own intensity as hard as you feel is good. If you wanna go harder than me, you go harder than me. And so modify to your, to, to your needs, okay? And remember, you can always pause me and take extra strokes in between. And when you do that, you will row so much more. Let's go back to arms only, sitting nice and tall, chest out. Keep the shoulders nice and low. The neck is far above your, your shoulders. You can see your neck. Adding in the swing of the upper body in one. And here we go. Swinging forward, chest out. Make sure you don't finish with your head like this. You always want to look forward, nice and steady. I will add in quarter slide rowing in one on this one. Keep the toes, keep the toes flexed throughout the stroke. Always feel this very solid connection of the heel onto the footboard. And we go to half slide in one on this one, half slide. Here we are, we drive those legs. Very good, nice. That's it. And we go to three quarters slide in one. On this one, three quarters. Beautiful. Drive it through. And we go to full slide in one. On this one, full slide. Take your time to fully compress the legs. We need to adjust your seated position a little bit. That's fine. And here we go. So what we're gonna do is we're going to add on five strokes each time. Go a little higher with the stroke count and then we come back down. Exhaling, we'll go for the count of five with power in two in one, and here we go, five hard strokes. One, two, three, four, five, very good. Not too high in the stroke rate, nice and controlled. Our next set is going to be 10 strokes. In two, in one, and off we go. One, long and strong. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Very good. And again, stroke rate is not too high today. It's a matter of finding the right length for your stroke, putting power on. You can hear the sound of the water wheel becoming louder. You can also see your splits getting faster. We'll go for 15 strokes. In two, in one, and here we go. One powerful. Two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, five to go. One, two, three, 
two, three, four, five, and good job. And paddle. If you wear a heart rate monitor, you should clearly see how the heart rate goes up. Let's make sure that you're not always in the red. You can, you, you can adjust that on your heart rate monitor. So, listen to your body, enjoy it. We'll go for 20 strokes in three, in two, in one, and 20 strokes it is. One, two, three. Fire those legs. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Down twenty to go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ten, ten left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and easy. And if you wonder, how I came to this number, it's called brain shrinkage. <sighs> I lost my five count. <laughs> but you know what? It's better to do more strokes than too few. <laughs> I think it was 20 that we were supposed to do, but we just skipped to 30. <laughs> Let's uh, the things that bring humor to this, such simple things, simple human calculating mistakes bring happiness. Let's do 25 instead. We'll go for 25 strokes, lengthen out, remember, elongation of the upper body, hinging forward before the rise of the knees. All right. 25 powerful strokes, in two, in one, and here we go. One, drive those legs, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and push those legs. One, two, three, four, five, ten to go. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, That was 25. <laughs> Very good. Let's go to arms only again. Sitting nice and tall. Chest out. If you want to grab a drink, grab a drink. Important to hydrate. Extend those arms. Sitting tall. Shoulders far away from your neck and extending those arms. That's it. Beautiful. Keeping those legs nice and still. And we're adding in the swing of the upper body in one on this one. Here we go. 
nice and sequential. That's right. Extending those arms, hinging forward, Hysia, and stretching over the straight legs. You can see how far you're going with the handle. You're covering the toes before you start swinging back. And we'll add in quarter slide rowing in one on this one, quarter slide rowing. And just make sure you cover the toes before you let the knees rise up. That's it. Very beautiful. Very beautiful. And we go to half slide in one. On this one, half slide. That's right, let the knees rise up. It's always good to reset everything with a stroke build. What we're doing right now is we are building the stroke back up so everything that you do is properly organized. And we go to three quarters slide in one on this one. Here we go. Three quarters. At three quarters, you don't lift your heels off the footboard. Always flex your toes back. Hold the handle loosely with your wrists. Never any tension in your wrists. And we'll add in full slide in one. On this one, we go to full slide right. That's it. We'll do a jump by 10. Since we've been at 30, we'll do 40, 50, and then back to 40 and 30. And then once we're at 30, we go down by five strokes at a time. So we're gonna go for 40 strokes, sitting nice and tall, good solid power. We're not going ultra fast on the stroke rate. Just really feel the length of your stroke and the power of your legs and how you squeeze the handle back to the chest. Stay sequential on the recovery. And we'll go for 40 strokes. In two, in one, and off we go. Long and strong, that's one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, halfway another twenty, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten to go, one, two, squeeze it, three, drive those legs, four, five to the sternum, six, seven, eight, nine, and good job. Woo! That was 40 strokes. Sitting nice and tall. Taking the time to exhale. Very good. And you know, I've spoken to you about yoga strength conditioning yoga that I do with Diamond Dallas Page, BDPY. <laughs> My 12 year old son, Reed, he led me <laughs> for a 50 minute workout 
using the moves that he has learned from DDP yoga. My mind was blown. We set out for 50 minutes. I don't know whether he was going to want to do 50 minutes, but he did do 50 minutes. It was pretty amazing. So yeah, for those of you who haven't heard it, since August 20th, I've done this yoga every second day, every other day I row. And the combination of it has brought me great joy. And now a loss of close to 20 pounds. Yup, I'm a happy man. Happy rowing yoga at the, uh, the way Dallas Page does it. Okay, how many strokes do we need to have? 50. Let's go for 50 strokes. Lengthen out, we go for 50. In two, in one, and off we go. Long and strong, one. Four, five, we pick up the pace a little bit. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten down. Five of those to go. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. 18, 19, 20, we go to 25, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, count again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, good job, 7, Ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, five left, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three. 24, 25, good job, 50 strokes, sitting up nice and tall, and you see me row one arm at a time, just relaxes me a little bit, very, very good, beautiful, 50 strokes, sitting tall, chest out, and honestly, at any time you want to grab a drink, you grab a drink. You've seen me grab a drink while rowing, and that is only possible if you are rowing sweeps on the water, holding just one arm at the oar at a time. In sculling that wouldn't work, because you need both hands for two oars. So we're sitting tall, chest out, toes flexed back. Before we go for 40, let's go to arms only. Here we go. Sitting nice and tall, chest out. Extend those arms. And we'll add in the swing of the upper body in two, in one, and here we go. Hinging forward, finding the nice sequential movement of recovery but then of course of drive as well <clears throat> beautiful yes. we'll add in quarter slide in two in one and here we go quarter slide pushing through that tiny bit of leg drive just make sure the handle covers the toes there it is you cover the toes right that's it and we go to half slide in one on this one where the elbows meet the knees that's about half slide very good take some cleansing stroke cleansing breath 
out of your lungs. We go to three quarter slide on this one. Find maximum compression, but you don't lift the heels. So what stops you from maximum compression is not to lift the heels. That's it. And we go to full slide rowing. In one. On this and full slide rowing. Rolling onto the ball of the foot. That's it. That's beautiful. 40 is on deck. We're gonna go for 40. I'll count two times 20. We're going to in one and here we go. We'll just ramp up the stroke rate a little bit. That's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, twelve, <laughs> thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty to go. One, two, three, four, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten to go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one more. And good. Good job. That was 40. Very, very good. Sitting tall. Chest out. Arms only. Nice and tall. Take the time to exhale. And you rarely say, you rarely hear me say, inhale all the way. I always say, exhale, purge the bottom of your lungs. Inhaling pretty high up, the max comes more easily than fully exhaling. Let's add in the swing of the upper body in two. In one, on this one, here we go. Hinging forward sitting tall and we'll go to quarter slide rowing in one on this one that's right building the stroke back up and we go to half slide in one on this one let the knees rise to the elbows very good beautiful that's just lovely and we go to three quarter slide in one on this one, three quarters. Extend those arms. That's perfect. Yes. Full slide in one. On this one, here we go, full slide. Letting the knees rise all the way to the chest. You can bring the heels off the footboard in order to maximize your range at the catch. Very good. We go for 30 strokes. We won't have that long of rest in between to bring it all the way down to five. We'll go for 30. In two. In one, and here we go. Three times 10. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two. 
That's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And we go for the third one. One, three, two, three, four. That was 30. Sitting tall, exhaling. We look over our shoulder, and yes, there's the boathouse. We're getting closer to home. We'll go for 25 strokes in five strokes. That's one, two, three, four. <laughs> Five, and here we go, 25. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three, four, Five, final ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And easy. That was twenty-five. I better count back the right way. So our next set is 20 strokes. Take the time to exhale. And yes, we're going in five strokes. We'll go for, we'll go for 20. <laughs> Four, three, two, one. And here we go, 20, one. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten to go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And 20. Woo. Sitting tall, extending the arms, reducing the rest time creates more intensity. Woo. We go for 15 in five strokes, in four, in three, in two. In one, and here we go, 15. One, two, three, four, five, ten big ones, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, five to go. One, two, keep the shoulders down, three, Four and five. Very good. Woo! We're going five for ten. Four. Three. Two. One. Ten. Here we come. One big one. Two. Push on those legs. Three. Four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and easy. Whoa! Keep moving. 
My I travel. I travel forward or backward. Remember, forward. Forward is this way in rowing. And I was traveling that way. Whoa! Very good. Five left. Let's go in three. In two. In one. And here we go. Long and strong. One. Two. Three. Four. And five. And easy. And sitting tall. Ah. And then let, let the legs come apart. That's right. Let the legs come apart. That was a beautiful row. You can take one foot out and keep one leg in. You can hold it with one arm. So you're not holding on to the handle here, just driving it along. Change hands, so now you're asymmetric. Completely. The one was the right hand, the right leg going, was lopsided. And I call this asymmetric rowing. Both feet back in, both hands on. And we'll take out the leg that you hadn't been taken out, in my case. It's this leg. I'll bring the hands close together again. Let the left leg that I'm using outside of the arms. I'm going to row asymmetrically. And the beauty about rowing asymmetrically is that you're not gonna want to interfere with the upper body while you're driving the leg, okay? So you get rid of the handle, make the handle go as far away as you can from your body before you start pulling. And let's change arms, go lopsided. That's it, beautifully lopsided here. That's right. Coming into 48 minutes here in about 10 seconds, and roughly, um, uh, well, 11,000 meters in about 50 meters. Let's take the other foot out, row, arms only with your feet down. And when you do this, you kind of readjust how you sit. Okay, because both legs are down, they give you now the ability to sit up. Almost sit up more than what you can do when the, when the legs are out in front of you. Okay, so you're sitting up and you're pulling the arms between the legs back. And that kind of helps you sit up, chest out. Imagine that there is an invisible string that pulls you up from the back of your head. Let's do another five like this. One, two, three, four, five. So I got I got a total of 11,000 water rower meters. And then when you're getting ready to get up, by the way, this was a beautiful workout. And this workout, keep repeating it until we are 300 years young, because that's the best way to do it. I've been listening to a fellow called Stephen Mark Ryan on YouTube. He talks about Tesla stocks. And there's something that he says that's really funny. He says he wants to he wants to live long enough to live forever. So, you know, with gene editing, we can probably add another 50 years to our lifespan, but we might as well go into this in a very healthy, powerful manner, the way we are doing it now, like this, rowing together. So there you have it. I spoke of the Queen's Gambit, spoke of DDPY, I spoke of uh, Stephen Mark Ryan. And for the Zoom, for my Zoom rowers, I have a special treat. And that special treat is that I'm going to take my Zoom rowers down the pit. The pit. 
pit that I dug right over across the pool here to create a koi pond. And it's a big koi pond, meaning it's deep and we hold so much dirt. And what blew my mind is that after one day of digging, I wasn't sore. After five days of digging, I wasn't sore. And I'd like to attribute this to staying physically active, rowing, but also shout out to you, DDPY, the combination <laughs> made it possible that the pit is done. So zoom rowers, I'm going to take you now. All right, let's go to the pit. I am very, I'm going to make sure that you guys are going to think I'm nuts. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm telling you, we're going, we're going to see the pit. <laughs> Let me change angle. Uh, here we go, here we go, here we go. Okay, okay, so right now, when I would show you this, right, this is four feet deep. You can see the shovel. The shovel tells you a little bit how, how far the whole thing goes. I'm gonna go down into the pit. And then I'm going to, I'm going to, just for size, just for size, I'm going to turn the camera around again because I want you guys to see. I mean, look, guys. yes, it is a pit. <laughs> now remember, I, I'm six foot three, 250 pounds. I went. <laughs> and it's kind of like a three leaf clover, but you want the pit to be deep enough so that the raccoons cannot grab the koi fish, mm. okay? <laughs> so this is this is what I've been doing. This is what I've been doing while you guys were thinking maybe he's rowing all the time. Mm -hmm.